Are you ready for the future? Check out the South Carolina Technical College System coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're on the main campus of Florence Darlington Technical College. We're focused on the South Carolina Technical College system and we're visiting with Dr. Charlie Gould, the president of Florence Darlington Technical College. Good morning, Dr. Gould. Good Thanks morning. so much for getting in this morning. Thank you for being here. Incredible opportunity all week to be here in one of your main conference rooms. It's very exciting to be here in Building 5000 on the campus talking earlier on about all the traffic that comes down Highway 52, not only between the counties, but throughout the PD region. It's an amazing area. It sure is. People are, are, are a little surprised when they get out and spend a little time and how much activity there is here. It's really great. I'm sure. Dr. Gould, are you originally from the area? No, I'm from Florida. I've been in the state about 24 years, but I'm from Florida. When did you assume the presidency of Florence Darlington? Uh, 1993. I've been here now about 10 years. Okay, great. Well, what were you doing prior to this a, a position? I was in the technical college system. I was the uh, executive vice president down at Technical College of Low Country in Beaufort. Mm -hmm. And I've also worked at uh, Denmark Technical College early in my career. I saw on the state tech site uh, a website that Denmark is the one of the 16 schools with uh, colleges within the state that actually has housing on campus. Yes, it had a uh, statewide mission many, many years ago and has retained that. And as a result, they are allowed to have uh, dormitories and housing for students. That's wonderful. When was Florence Darlington Technical College first organized? Well, about 1963. They were one of the uh, one of the first four or five colleges that that uh, came to fruition in the system uh, very early on. A uh, number of politicians that were interested in, and community leaders that were interested in establishing it, and uh, worked to get it uh, really between Florence and Darlington. At that time, Dillon was in the service area that, that's now been changed. But uh, we're about as close to the county line as you can get. It's just on the other side of the, the entrance. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and, and the campuses are located uh, here in? We have a main campus here on Highway 52, and we have five other campus sites. We have mm -hmm. a major health science campus in downtown Florence. We've got a campus in Lake City. We've got a campus in Hartsville, another cosmetology center in Darlington, and we're soon going to open another uh, site in Mullins downtown Mullins. Spectacular. So Marion County is very much a part of the uh, Florence Darling. Yes, County. Marion's in our service area, uh, and uh, although we're not on the village for uh, for that county, so they don't have representation on the board, but we still serve them and work very closely with them. Mm. Can you tell the viewers about the plans to add a technical technology park to the main campus here? Yes, the board has been working along with myself and members of the faculty and staff for about two and a half years. Uh, we recently purchased 146 acres behind us, and that's where we're going to plan this major expansion. Uh, we're going to add about 325,000 square feet of instructional space that will be devoted exclusively to supporting uh, high-tech manufacturing. Uh, and we're doing it for two reasons. One, our industrial base here is changing rather radically, as everyone is, in terms of technology and incorporating technology in their manufacturing processes. And secondly, we, uh, we want to be an economic development asset to potential prospects and show them that we can provide the kind of training that they, they would need to be able to locate here and have the workforce that they need. Absolutely. Have all these projects, the projects for the expansion, been funded already, or is that a constant process? It, it's a constant process. You, you never get all the funding you need, and you never get it all in one shot. Uh, we have bond money from the state. We've got federal money. We've got uh, some other sources. We've got local institutional bonding sources, so we, we're not waiting on the state to give us a check. We're, we're moving ahead with the project. Mm. In fact, they start the major design component starts Monday morning uh, with the team that we've selected. Spectacular. Can you tell the viewers about how <clears throat> the, the programs that Florence Arlington Technical College offers and, and how those uh, rely or how they respond to the needs in, in, in the communities you serve? Sure. Um, there are 16 technical colleges in the system, and each one uh, reflects somewhat their local economy and the local workforce needs. Uh, for example, if you look at Ori Georgetown, you'll see service programs and culinary arts and so forth, and that really reflects their service economy. Ours is mostly devoted towards supporting manufacturing and supporting the healthcare industry. We have a very large healthcare industry, two major hospitals, 
other associated ancillary uh, health providers with a total workforce population, some in the neighborhood of about 15,000. Mm. Uh, so that's a very important component of our uh, curricula. The second is we have a very wide industrial base here, very wide manufacturing base, everything from Wellman to Nanya to Honda to GE to Roche, uh, which has served us well in the, in the economic downturn that we've been through the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So all the rest of our curricula is devoted to supporting that. And then, of course, what's left over are the various uh, curricula pieces that every two-year college has, the Associate Arts, Associate Science program, and so forth. Mm. Dr. Gould, how many students are currently enrolled within the different campuses? We're just under 4,200 curriculum students, and last year we logged over 30,000 continuing education registrations. Over 30,000? Yeah, that's not 30,000 different people, but 30,000 registrations for various continuing education programs. It's a, it's a big business for us, and it's almost exclusively devoted to training and industry. And, and long-distance learning is also a component of, of the, the campus? Yes, we developed, several years ago, we developed, started beginning to develop uh, online curricula. We now offer uh, five degrees, associate degrees online. Roughly about 23% of our students take online courses, whether either, either all online courses or one or two mixed with their other uh, on-campus courses. Mm. So it's been a big a big thing for us to do it meant a number of partnerships with uh, colleges and universities out of state where students can uh, matriculate online and, and finish their four-year degree if they decide to do that. Can we talk a little bit about how technical education has changed either from your move from the low country to the PD or just from your, your tenure here in the PD? Well, the major move in coming from the low country was the change in an emphasis on the service uh, sector of the economy into a more manufacturing focused. Uh, so that was the major change in that move. But the major change that I've seen in technical education over the last 25 years are the the, uh, the change in an associate degree and, and the more uh, complete reliance on skills-based training certificates, uh, very focused training that uh, specific industries need for specific purposes done at very specific times. Uh, and that you've had to be a lot more flexible than you did in the, in the past. And that's been a, a major change. Also being able to incorporate, incorporate technologies that you didn't have in your inventory. Uh, for example, when Roche Carolina came, uh, there was no, nothing in the curricula to support that industry. And we now have gone through an evolution where we institute an associate degree and now have branched off into several different training certificates that now serve about five to six industries that demand that kind of training. Mm. So it's, uh, that's been the, the major change. And, it's, uh, and of course, technology changes every day. Uh, and the, the way they incorporate technology in their manufacturing processes changes radically. And you've got to have a faculty that's very, very clear on how to do that. You've got to be able to have access to the technology to be able to teach the students. Uh, you, you're, becoming less and less inclined to rely on generic training. It's got to be very specific. I was about to ask you how you would perceive the future uh, of Florence Darlington Technical College. And as you sit there and think, you, you never know when another uh, Roche Carolina is going to uh, show up in the PD and say, we need a curriculum change for us. But if you could think about changes that the college will face over the next five years with some type of a crystal ball, can you can you give any indication uh, what Yes, uh, we've, we've looked at that. Of course, that's part of the reason we're developing the technology park. Um, we're looking very seriously at incorporating uh, uh, biotechniques in our industrial base uh, mm -hmm. that we would have in our curriculum. We're looking at all of the implications nanotechnology has, which is a, a, just a major technological change that's gonna, that is occurring. Uh, we're looking at uh, anything to do with in the semiconductor field. We're looking at environmental components because all of the manufacturing entities that we'll locate here have got uh, ever-changing environmental responsibilities that they've got to go through, and we've got to train those technicians to work with them. Uh, also, the, in, the whole area of industrial maintenance has become very, very high-tech. It's very electronic-focused, uh, very CNC-based, uh, very, very PLC-based, and, and uh, the students have just got to be able to be familiar with all of those. That demands a lot of computer uh, curricula. That demands a lot of support mechanisms for the students as they learn those, those technologies to be able to support the industries. Mm -hmm. And they're all... They're all worth a fortune when they get out uh, because the jobs are there and they're uh, uh, they're, they're in de desperate need of them. I'm sure in such a re such a large region, you all are serving, Dr. Gould. But, uh, how do you all face the challenges in serving such a large region? Well, I think that's the benefit of having a system. 
is that as, as your uh, your needs grow and, and your responsibilities grow, you've got sister colleges to work uh, in partnerships with. Uh, for example, we're doing a, uh, we have Northeastern Technical College, which is up in the Chesterfield Marlboro area. Uh, they do not have an associate degree nursing program, but they've got uh, they've got hospitals that have a strong need for that. So we're in partnership with them and have offered uh, several options for the hospitals that we can work with that college to. And, and that saves them from having to put in a very expensive program that they don't have the resources for. So I think that's the benefit of the system, and you can meet those needs, especially on a statewide basis, and uh, and support them. And the advent of online learning uh, allows those curricula to be uh, to be exposed at a much much broader level than than you would have imagined five ten years ago. Meeting those needs are so important, and meeting the needs of the economy and the workforce changes so dramatically. How does Florence Darlington go about? meeting the needs of the economy and the workforce locally? Well, we're, we're out in industry all the time. Uh, we've got a whole staff of people that uh, spend all their time communicating with industry. Uh, I, I make visits. Other folks make visits. We, uh, we invite them here on the campus. Uh, we're very involved, as all the technical colleges are, with advisory committees. Every curricula we have here has advisory committees made up of people from industry. They meet twice a year. Uh, they give us feedback. Uh, every curricula we have here is on a three-year rotating schedule for complete revamping. We tear it down. We tear one-third of our curriculum down every year, uh, mm -hmm. right down to the very basics. Wow. Invite people from industry in, rebuild it, and then uh, and then make the changes we need. So that's one of the, that's one of the ways we keep uh, current on that. That responsiveness is amazing. Well, if we don't have it, we're not competitive. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where we have the competitive edge over other states. Mm -hmm. uh, I've talked to a state uh, recently that we're in competition with on an economic development prospect, and uh, the only workforce training they give is a, a $300 allotment, and uh, and it's really up to the, the school to kind of figure out how they're going to do it. We don't do it that way. South Carolina is much more competitive than that. That's fantastic. When you think about uh, uh, the growth rate of technical colleges within the state, ha why do you think the, the growth rate's been so uh, s surprisingly large juxtaposed against other institutions of higher learning within the state? Well, you've got a number of factors. One, uh, those people who are in the workforce have been told for the last 15 years that they need to get more training. Uh, so you've got that cohort of students that comes back. Secondly, you've got a, a large number of folks who are, who are out in the workforce and know they can do better if they've got the skills and they had decided not to do that earlier, they come back. Mm -hmm. uh, thirdly, I think you've got a changing uh, attitude towards technical education. We were kind of seen as less than blue collar and a kind of a, a low end option, if you will, uh, for education. And now people are seeing that uh, the people we're turning out here are starting off in the workforce at thirty-five, thirty-eight, thirty-nine thousand dollars a year with lots of potential for advancement. And uh, that gets people's attention. It, it helps parents uh, educate their children and, and help them make their career choices and their and the decisions. So I think all of those. Plus, the whole system, I think, has grown just like everybody else in South Carolina. We've matured. We've made our message a little bit clearer, and, uh, and people understand it a little bit better than they did before. What do you think, Dr. Gould, is the most important benefit that, or, uh, that Florence Darlington Technical College provides to the, to the local community? I think the, uh, the advantage to get education close to home that will um, translate into a better job a better job opportunities and, uh, and a better skill base in order to be able to perform the jobs. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we sell. That's, uh, uh, we're, we're very involved. We don't do curricula that don't have some uh, influence or some uh, connection with the workforce. That's not what we're about. Uh, it's, it's strictly so people, when they come here, that's they know, they know that's what they can expect. The mission was laid out under then Governor Hollings a long time ago. Yes, and we capitalized the word technical. We're very mm -hmm. proud of it. Uh, we don't We don't try to to change that word at all. That's our focus, and we, we've done very well. I know the viewers can't see your lapel there, but the tech is very large right in the center of that button there. That's fantastic. If you weren't currently the president of Florence Darlington Technical College, what do you think you'd be doing, Dr. Gould? Uh, I'd probably be back in the classroom uh, where I came out of. Uh, everybody who's left the classroom realizes that was a great job, so I thought I'd be going back to that. But uh, I also think I would I would enjoy working in industry. Uh, um, it, in the training aspect of industry, that that's a pretty exciting place to be as well. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, the classroom has always been a, a favorite. So, either in the classroom or in training, the the skills he's garnered at the tech college, whether in the Low Country or here in the PD, 
he's recognized that he'd want to take that with him. Dr. Charlie Gould, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're on the main campus of Florence Darlington Technical College. We're focused on the South Carolina Technical College system and we're visiting with Suzanne Dawsey, the business and industry liaison here at Florence Darlington Technical College. Good morning, Suzanne. Good Thanks morning. so much for being with us this morning. Glad to be here. Following Dr. Gould there, special man who's really done a lot here, it, it seems, on the campus. A spectacular opportunity. Certainly has. Are you originally from the area, Suzanne? Yes, I'm a native of Marion. Great. My family's from Marion, so I'm uh, just very familiar with the area. You still have family here in the area? Yes, in Marion. Mm -hmm. All in Marion. Do you mm -hmm. live in Marion? Yes. Oh, great. Good. Well, of course, Florence Darlington, Marion County is, I think we heard Dr. Gould talk about an expansion over into Mullins, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Marion, Florence, and Darlington counties are the service area for the college. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did you begin working at Florence Darlington? Just joined the college back in June of uh, this past year and uh, working as the business and industry liaison there. And um, part of my responsibilities are to uh, partnership with existing industries to uh, promote uh, programs that will uh, supply the industries with workforce needs. And what we're finding is particularly in the areas of engineering technology is where uh, the, the most critical needs are from an industry standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so I'm um, working on some projects with them to help promote uh, some students to, to move into those areas. Great, great. Mm -hmm. Suzanne, what had you been doing prior to uh, joining Florence Darlington Tech? Well, prior to joining the college, I was the training manager for a major automotive company mm. in Marion. And um, so I had an opportunity to really experience the the needs of an industry firsthand and uh, looking at the training needs that they have in a manufacturing setting. Prior to that, I was in public education. and I was a teacher and administrator at the district level. And so I've been able to, I've been fortunate enough to see the uh, uh, both sides of the arena in terms of the educational aspects of it and um, the industry side of the, of the spectrum as well. So it's been a very very uh, enlightening experience for Education's me. Education is definitely in your blood. Sure. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. How about some of the benefits derived from partnerships between the businesses and the college? It, when you think about uh, over the, sh the short tenure, the short time you've been here, but on a very quick basis, I'm sure you were thrust into it. You've been able to recognize already many of those partnerships. What are some of those like? Well, really, from both sides of, of uh, the disciplines, I've been able to uh, understand the, how critical it is for the technical college and the industry representatives to collaborate together on projects. Um, as an industry representative, I was constantly connecting with the college to help me with uh, training uh, programs, to help train the existing employees that were in our facility. And uh, now from the college standpoint, understanding that, that our real customer, you know, the customers out there are the industries. And we are there to satisfy their workforce needs. And that's where it all starts. And in order for that to happen, we need to uh, make sure that we uh, create a pathway of communication that's going to be effective and open so that we can move our curriculum to meet their needs as technology advances. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Golly, a very important role. Absolutely. Yes, a it very is. important role. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the process, if you could give a, if you were talking to a group of eighth graders about the process mm -hmm. of developing partnerships between a business and the college, how would you go about describing that? Obviously, it's dependent on what the business is, but let's say it was an auto manufacturer. Mm -hmm. How about going about the process of developing that partnership? Mm -hmm. Well, there's different factors in trying to, to develop a partnership. It's certainly to educate the, the students and, and the teachers that are in the, um, the high schools right now to help them understand the relevance for 
uh, the technical aspects to be presented and the opportunities to be, to be presented for the students. Um, initially what we do is we go in to high schools, we uh, convey our message to the, the high school students, we generally pair up with industry representatives to go into the schools and to explain the industry side of the, uh, the needs there you know, to the students and we'll have the technical college representatives there to explain, well, this is how you can acquire those skills. And this is what it means in terms of quality of life and how, you know, what you can expect out of a technical career. Mm -hmm. So we found it to be much more effective to partnership with industry representatives to, uh, to go along with us to help us recruit students and to educate the general public about uh, what role the technical education is going to be playing in our futures. Absolutely. Can you give the viewers a sense of some of the special programs that have begun as a result of partnering with private industry? Well, one particular program that we're very proud of is um, an engineering technology scholars program. Mm -hmm. And because engineering technology has been an area that is such critical need for the industries, uh, most industry representatives I go and talk with will say, Suzanne, find me some technicians that can take or that can uh, troubleshoot equipment that can fix our equipment and machinery. And so we are um, sponsoring students, actually industries are sponsoring students, paying their tuition, paying for their books, wow. letting them, uh, giving them a paid internship while they're out here at the college in the engineering technology program uh, so that they can gain that experience and, um, and have some opportunities uh, to you know, once they graduate, to work with that particular company or, or with another company. Mm -hmm. It's really turned out to be a win-win situation. The employers are happy that they see that they have an opportunity to, to train uh, future employees. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the students are getting uh, that first-hand experience that they can put on their resumes right. to, uh, to help market themselves when they graduate. And the great thing is, I guess, it's it, a win-win for both sides because the company doesn't have to go out and hire those trainers directly, but they're able That's to right. fund everything. And, and, and the students, if, if students that aren't necessarily in, in that program directly from the employer, mm -hmm. they're in there with the benefit of being able to go out to work for any numbers of employers. Mm -hmm. That's correct. How mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. How exciting. Can you talk about the, uh, the work with economic development officials within the area, uh, I guess within a three-county three area as your primary service area? Mm -hmm. Is there constant involvement with the, th the economic development officers in these three counties? Yes. I mean, economic development is just a, a big part of what we're all about. Yeah. And we want to be on the cutting edge of any type of economic development that is going to happen here in our region. Uh, one of the very first things new industry, you know, ask about is the workforce and, and what capabilities do we have in our region to train the workforce that they're going to need. And so we really are at the very center of um, economic development here at the college and in our relationships that we um, establish with industry people, with the economic development boards, uh, we all play a critical role. And in my role particularly, um, I have opportunities to participate on some of the committees and to um, to help facilitate that process as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And when you think about uh, even in this short tenure at Florence uh, Darlington Tech, when you think about the importance not only for Florence Darlington but for community co uh, tech colleges throughout the state, the impact on these three counties in particular, mm -hmm. how do you perceive that impact? I think it's absolutely um, critical to our future growth and development here. I think we really are, are starting to um, increase our campaign to get our message out about a technical career. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the economic downturns recently, I know people are, are um, discouraged, but I really feel like the, um, the answer to our economic development ways is to educate our people and to provide the technical training and the skills that are needed and we will have much better opportunity to expand and to grow and to be mm -hmm. prosperous in the region. Yes. Mm -hmm. Suzanne, can we talk real quick about the technology park that Dr. Gould was talking about? Once it expands, mm -hmm. it's 146 acres right behind this main campus here. Mm -hmm. Incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. How will that impact uh, the training that goes on? Oh, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. really is just a, just a fantastic uh, 
um, opportunity, I think, for the whole region. And from an industry standpoint, uh, this is something that I feel like will certainly meet the needs that existing industry has and also meet the needs of some future industries that would be coming in mm -hmm. to be able to uh, to use the resources and to uh, to launch some of their platforms um, in a setting that's conducive for that and really help to contribute to the economic growth of the area. Yeah. Suzanne, we have less than a minute. Over the last nine, almost ten months now that you've been on with Lawrence Arlington Tech, can you think about any accomplish in accomplishment in particular of which you think you're probably most proud? Mm. Well, it's really rewarding to see the, uh, the students in the engineering technology program actually working hands-on in companies like Honda, um, Arvin Meritor, um, uh, Nanya Plastics, those, those uh, types of companies, and uh, getting to see their comments about what they're learning and to hear the engineers talk about their performance. So that's been very rewarding. Also, with the high school program and trying to promote the science and technology um, of these students, we're working with um, some robotics programs to, to help get some students on our radar screens to help entice them to come into our programs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're visiting with Suzanne Dawsey, having gone from education into industry and now working to bring the two together, the business and industry liaison for Florence Darlington Technical College. Thanks again for being with us this morning, Suzanne. You're welcome. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. I want to thank President Charlie Gould and Suzanne Dawsey for making today's Carolina people such a great success.